campus news. The SEC released their protocols today uh, for for the season. All of their medical, you know, ish, whatever. Uh, they are supposed to, at some point today, release the two teams that are be going to be added to everybody's schedule. Now, who knows when that's actually going to happen because we're sitting here at 2.53 p.m. Central Time and there's not a damn thing that's come across. And I don't know how hard that could possibly be, but... Either way, they're supposed to release those two teams today, and then sometime next week, they're supposed to have a full dated schedule, you know, a full calendar, and then we'll we'll figure it out from there. But uh, but here's the deal on this. Ben Kirkoval over at CBS Sports says, the SEC will implement additional safeguards for athletes, coaches, and other game day personnel as it marches towards its 10-game conference-only schedule beginning September 26th. The additional measures are on top of the minimum guidelines set forth by power conferences and the NCAA earlier in the summer. The additional protocols for all fall sports range from more frequent testing to face covering mandates, along with a medical response and quarantine plans. Um, basically, let's let's dive into this. Student athletes and coaches are going to be tested twice weekly, so typically Sunday and then on Wednesday prior to game time. Now, if we want to dive into how ridiculous that is, uh, then we can, but I don't know... Um, I don't know. I, I, why would you not test on Friday before the game? I mean, I guess if, if it takes three days to get results back, maybe? Like, maybe those are the tests that they bought? Can you explain that? Uh, no, but it doesn't make sense. I mean, it shouldn't take three days. If you get tested I mean, on right Wednesday. Now at Olive Branch, you can go and get a test done and have it back in less than 24 hours. Yeah, so, so why in the world would you not, at, at the very least, be tested on, like, Thursday night? You know, or, or Friday morning, and that way, Saturday morning before the game, you can figure out, Okay, if somebody has it. But the issue there, I guess, is if you've got contact tracing and all that kind of mess, then I don't know. Either way, it's a, it's a bit of a mess. So next up, medical staff who have a reasonable expectation for daily or frequent student-athlete interaction will be required to undergo similar surveillance as the student-athletes and coaching staff. Medical staff who only interact with a team on game day shall be PCR tested once per week, three days prior to assigned competition at the respective member institution where such personnel shall operate. Uh, I'm trying to figure out really why you would test on Sunday. I mean, I guess like day after a game, like would would that matter? But but honestly, we've learned about this virus that it can incubate for you know up to four days. So I I don't know. It, it I, some of this stuff I just don't get. Uh, and then next is all coaches, staff, and non-competing student athletes are required to wear a face mask, neck gaiter on the sideline. Uh, physical distancing should be employed to the extent possible, which is going to be impossible on the sideline. You know that they're all going to be on top of each other. They always are. Um, it says uh, competing student athletes shall wear a net gaiter that can be used for timeouts, conferring with coaches on the sideline, etc. At this time, face shields are not a suitable replacement for a face mask, net gaiters for non-competing student athletes, coaches, and other staff on the sidelines. Uh, additionally, all officials are required to wear a face mask when physically distancing cannot be achieved, excluding active play. Individuals working the sideline will be required to wear a face mask at all times. Uh, each SEC program is required to designate a COVID-19 protocol oversight officer to educate and ensure all compliance with the conference's mandates. Um, okay, so that's a lot to, uh, that's a lot to dive into. Um, Matt said, if someone tests positive, you have more time to quarantine whoever came in contact with them, plus not allow them to travel. Okay, so that, that would explain the Sunday deal. Um, Michael said, you would think these schools would have rapid results. And then Matt said, the travel is part of it, allowing a positive case to travel. And, okay, I can, I can get that. But even still, like it, the, the testing thing is just weird to me. Like, why on earth would you not get the, the rapid result test? Well, so we that, don't know that they don't have that. You're but if assuming that's the case, that why would you do it on, it this on way? Hang on. You're assuming they did that because of because of the date that they're going to test. I mean, yeah, I guess so. I mean, I'm, I'm just making assumptions here, but it, it just... The, Here's the deal. They've made a decision to test twice a week, okay? So if just, they're going to test just twice a week, they got to pick two days. Does it matter what two days they pick, really? I, I mean, I because might have done we have found you can test positive one day and then test negative the next, or test negative one day and test positive the next. I guess is what they don't have in here is this whole thing about, because we've seen a lot of false positives. So yes. if you get a, Matt just jumped in, he said they're risking their lives, Gary. Uh, if, if, you, if you test positive on Wednesday, then I guess you would get to test 
again on Thursday and Friday, and if yep. you test negative those two times, then you get to play on, on Saturday. So that way you can tell if it's a false but Maybe that's it. Again, making assumptions. Um, Terry said, I'd say test them after every play. I mean, they're risking their lives. They, these guys, I swear to God. Um, so the, the face mask thing, that's going to be something to get used to. I haven't seen other conferences discuss this. Um, I mean, what do we... At Matt said, we have some people who test positive who never took the test. Uh, they left the testing center before the swab was actually performed. Yeah, I've, I've heard that. So, you know, obviously we've got some faulty stuff going on here, which is a little scary. But I, the face mask thing, let's, let's dive into that. Um, I, do you believe that everybody is going to adhere to that? I mean, that's a lot of, you know, you'll obviously have it around your, I guess, around your neck. Yep. And then you'll have to pull it up every single time you go over to talk to a coach or every single time you go talk to your group of players or whatever. You just don't have to wear it out on the field. It, that seemed a little weird to you. No, I think it's fine. I'm wondering if some of this is, is for optics, maybe. Or, or do you no, think it's I mean, actually... I think, I think that's fine. I think what they're asking is reasonable. And any benef- any any type of help will help. Yeah, I guess you're right. I guess you're right. Matt said... I mean, um, you're wanting them to make it 100% safe and secure, then then we can't play football, Gary. So we have to be flexible. But no, you, you've got a valid point. I just... I, I don't... I'm not looking for it to be safe and secure. I just think, like, if all these guys have tested negative and and they're okay enough they to play the game... they still want them to wear the mask. I understand that. I get that. Okay. And and obviously, I'm not... Because we know people. you can test negative one day and be positive the next. Yeah. So that's the reason why we, we want to help mitigate anything we can mitigate. And that, Okay, that makes sense. Obviously, I am not the kind of person that is telling people not to wear masks or that it's a fraud or whatever. I wear my mask as frequently as you could possibly do it. Um, but, you know, uh, the Brown Yeti said it's hard to talk through a mask. Well, it depends on what kind of mask you got, really. Like that, the ones that I've got, not that hard. Um, Michael said this is going to be a shit show. And Matt said conditioning is going to be huge. They are going to get gassed in hot weather. It maybe depending upon what the the face masks on the helmets uh, look like, and and what ends up being, you know, I've, I've heard about them fogging up and all that kind of stuff, especially down to LSU. Um, Terry said the face masks are dumb because uh, in the MLB, the first and third base coaches are supposed to wear them, but half the time they're down or below their nose, so they're not serving any purpose. It, again, some of it might be optics, but the other side of it is, like Chris said, I mean, anything you can do to to help stop it, I mean, why not? Like it kind of makes sense. So. So, yeah, the SEC coming out with all this different stuff, um, they they have their list of things to, um, I guess, to to make it where they will have to cancel a game. They That has not been released from what I have seen. Uh, but they do have that, that protocol set up for, you know, if this happens, then we'll end up having to cancel games, right? Because it, as it stands, it was like, okay, well, do you go on and play if an entire or an entire starting offensive line goes down, but the backup offensive linemen are good? Like, can you still play that game, or do you have to postpone it? You know, we nobody knew exactly what the what the situation would be, but apparently now we've got it, and I mean, I'm sure it'll be released eventually. Uh, Michael said it is clear as mud. Let's just play football. These schools just need to agree and do their best. I mean, I, yeah, I agree with you, um, but at the same time, I don't think this is hurting anything. Um, <laughs> Matt said they can't haze freshmen with uh, with butt chugging this year. No, they're not going to be doing any of that. You've got that right. So this uh, this kind of leads us into our next topic, and that is 